Hello everybody, welcome back to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast. We are live across YouTube, Garibaldi Red and Facebook, Nottingham Forest News. I'm Max Hayes, your host, and joined by Dave Asprey and Max Scott, both legends, both returning to the podcast this afternoon to talk about what is a huge game for Forest tomorrow against Luton. A must-win, a cup final, as people are talking about. It really, really could define Forest's season. Um, Max, Dave... Afternoon, I was about to say morning. Afternoon to you both uh, on this Friday. Um, and I suppose it's nice, actually, Dave, isn't it, that Max is joining us for Friday brunch. It's, hopefully he can find an, a, a special recipe out of his cookbook. <laughs> I think he might be a bit more modern in the kitchen than I am. That's, that's for certain, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, say, saying that, boys, actually, I've, I've just wolfed down a, mic- a microwave uh, macaroni and cheese and about four, four slices of fresh bread. So I'm carved up, ready to go. <laughs> Carved up, ready to go for Garibaldi Red. Uh, That's an interesting Friday. food diary, there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just I just needed something. Brilliant. Um, you've got to fuel yourself up talking about Forest at the moment for sure. Uh, we're live on Facebook and YouTube, Nottingham Forest News, Garibaldi Red. So if you do want to get your comments in about tomorrow's game, uh, then we will put them, of course, um, to us and we will discuss them throughout. Uh, right, Dave, let's start with you. We talked on Monday, which feels like an eternity ago really now, uh, just about kind of post-Brighton and, and, and the disappointment that we kind of found ourselves in the back of, more controversy. But really now, this week has, has been even bigger, uh, given the possible um, kind of points deduction here and as well that will come out um, most likely next week. Uh, but in terms of tomorrow's game, I think this is the biggest game since Wembley, would you agree, Dave? Absolutely. I was uh, very... Privileged to be invited onto a Luton Town uh, podcast last night, Oh, in the Town. And um, I said, looking at both sides of the coin, it's the biggest game since we played Huddersfield Town at Wembley in the playoff final. And it's the biggest game for Luton Town since they played Coventry City at Wembley in the playoff final. Which then led me to to, uh, summarise that this tomorrow is as near to a playoff game in the Premier League as you will get. It's huge. It's massive. I, I would, I, I've read a, a couple of prediction sites this morning. Most people are sort of hedging their bets and sitting on the fence. Chris Sutton's gone 2-2. There's another one that said, what, like 1-1 or whatever. I don't expect a great game. I expect a game where, in the end, the concept of making sure we don't lose overrides the concept of, you know, if one of the teams is brave enough to go for it, then they'll earn the victory. Uh, but it is a colossal game I for both of them. And and it's psychologically fascinating because neither of them are in great shape. I thought we were pretty poor at Brighton. But it's one of the most disappointing days I've had travelling with Nottingham Forest for a long time. Uh, personally speaking, it was a tough game. And then Forest added more woe onto it. And Luton, Luton saw a slight glimpse of a promised land for 45 minutes and then had it brutally taken away from them. So how... How Rob Edwards um, rebuilds spirit and confidence and motivation in Luton Town over a short turn of, turnaround time of certainly two hours could be defining tomorrow. So neither of them are in great form. Neither of them are blessed with great confidence and belief at the moment. The one thing I will guarantee you is it'll be a cauldron of an atmosphere due to the Luton Town fans. They'll make it really, really difficult. Forrest are going to have to withstand uh you know a verb uh, you know an, an oral barrage from the um from the uh, from the stands so it's going to be really difficult whoever is the most mentally together team on the day will win it but i expect a very tight very cagey game where you know do you stick or do you twist i i, I don't expect a classic uh, no, I don't think it. I don't think it will be either. Um, such a big game. Lots of comments uh, coming into us. Mark says afternoon. Uh, Michael says uh, proper six pointer this. So come on, you Reds. Uh, Kev, Absolutely. afternoon all you Reds. Very nervous for tomorrow, uh, as we all are. Max, how do you? It's been a while actually since we've talked Forest. How do you really see the <coughs> Forest situation at the moment? I feel like at the moment off the pitch, there's so much going on that it that it, it almost 
I think it's distracting for the players on the pitch, even though they are professionals. And it just seems like, you know, there's rumours today that this points deduction is going to come out. There's rumours of all sorts of kind of stuff. And, and, it, and it just doesn't, it doesn't, does, doesn't help the club at the moment, given the, the desperation for points, really. No, it doesn't. Um, I think there's been lots of things, you know, we, it, we, Forrest have been the victim of some, um, what seems like an inordinate amount of really poor refereeing decisions. Decisions. There's no doubt about that. And obviously, it's easy to say that as a Forest fan, but colleagues I work with, you know, every time I go into the office, I sort of think, like, Max, what do you think of that? I mean, that was a shocker. So there's that to contend with. For me personally, I, you know, I've, I've said this publicly, I think the appointment of Mark Clattenburg um, is really confusing. I think it's quite embarrassing. I think that it draws attention to the club um, that's not good attention. Absolutely. And so so things like that, yes, they do distract the players, regardless of you know how professional they are. And the thing that concerns me about, about the Luton game is Luton remind me of Forrest last season. First 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 season back in the Premier League for a long time, or back in the top flight in for a long time. Um, a fantastic old classic stadium with incredible home support. Um, I think Forest's home form last season is probably a little bit better than Luton's, but nonetheless, you've got to credit Luton for the type of and Rob Edwards for what they've managed to do. And you know they've gone through the mill with what's happened with Tom Lockyer. Um, and you know although there are re- relegation rivals, I can't help but feel a great deal of admiration for Luton. But it worries me that they remind me of us last season because we we had that momentum and we had that sort of strength of feeling at the club um, through what Steve Cooper had done. Now, I'll make it clear, I don't think that Nuno should be sacked. I think that that's ridiculous, some of the tweets that I've seen. I didn't think we should have sacked Cooper at the time. But parking all that, we ha- I think we have to acknowledge that as a club, we have gone through a massive sort of transitional period this season. Um, call it, you know, the soul of the club, the feeling, the emotion. Some people don't like talking about it, but I think it really matters to what happens on the pitch. We, you know, since Steve Cooper's departure, whilst Nuno's come in and we really want him to do well and we're behind him, we have lost something, I think, um, and we're trying to rebuild. And all of these things around... Um, Mark Clattenburg coming in to try and build relationships with the PGMOL, um, you know, I, all of that just leads to quite, I think, a, a difficult feeling at the club. So that makes tomorrow, I think, even more interesting. Um, I would say on paper, Forest have uh, Forest should win the game. Um, I know we're in similar league positions, uh, and, and actually, I, I think I slightly disagree with Dave about it being a cagey affair. The thing about Luton and Forest, particularly Forest under Nuno, is we score quite a lot of goals, um, and particularly Luton. And so I, I've got a feeling that it could be a bit of a classic tomorrow in terms of goals. Um, and I'd love to see sort of Tywo and Alanga back in the fold because I think they're incredibly dangerous. Mm. Yeah. Do you agree there, Dave? Do you think that um, kind of tomorrow, in terms of players like Ty- I mean, you? Yeah. Like Max says, you look at the squad on paper, and it's a squad. No disrespect to Luton, that should be should be beating Luton, but but then almost all of this kind of hype and and, and build up around the game might might work against Forest. It might work in Luton's favour as them being the underdogs, them being similar to Forest last season. It, it's not going to be an easy game at all tomorrow at Kenilworth Road. No, it's going to be incredibly difficult. Um, Luton Town will probably always be perceived as underdogs because we've won two European Cups, we've won league titles, we've won league cups, we are we have a bigger ground and all this kind of stuff. It's like, you know, we're seen as perceived as one of the grand old football clubs of you know of English football. Luton Town are an excellent club, brilliantly run, especially by Gary Sweet. I agree with everything that Max has said. I find the Clattenburg uh, appointment just uh an irrelevance and utter irrelevance. What can he do? I'm old school. As you can probably tell from my grey hair and the double chins and the wrinkles. A referee is right even when he's wrong. I have never, ever had a go at a referee. What I think, Max, where Max is right uh, about the soul of the club is I believe that certain decisions and certain facets of our club at the moment bring bad karma on us. 
when the decisions go against you shut your mouth get behind that dressing room door say right let's have some siege mentality don't be my owner chasing a referee down a tunnel i think is unbelievably undignified and not a good look at all i want the moral high ground mm. luton town luton town I've gone and got the Marrow High ground from the moment that everybody thought that they would lose every game and Garth Crooks and people like that who really should know better and people on TalkSport have just been mocking them. If Robert Rob Edwards is savvy and modern and intelligent and highly articulate, he'll take that stuff and he'll use it as a motivational tool. Right. And and I agree with everything Max says. He, he you know, I nod profusely when he talks because what, what comes out of his mouth correlates with what is in my head. And um you know, this game, it, 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 a key point is what he says. It, I, I talked last night on the on the Luton Town podcast and the excellent people that run this podcast. And I said it's first season syndrome against second season syndrome. Luton Town resemble us of last year for all the reasons that Max has, has, has pointed out. I worry about us sometimes that we resemble Leeds United of last season. I really do. And if you want, if you want to talk about the soul of the club, um, anybody walking out of the Amex on Sunday afternoon, that away support, it was really lifeless at the Amex. It was there was about 20 minutes of Mull of Kintyre and you know, your ground's too big for you, and all this kind of stuff, and trouble in the library, and then it just fizzled out. And most people, I heard people, you know, even with my one good ear, I heard people as we walked out the Amex going, play like that, we'll get buried at Luton. I think the key factors tomorrow are all on Luton. How do Luton psychologically handle the unbelievable gut punch that they got on Wednesday night? To have it, to have it kind of teased at you and then have it dragged away. You know, we might end up in the fullness of time thanking Bournemouth for what they did the other night. At half time, at half time, I was like, we're down and we'll get buried on Saturday. That's how I felt at half time. And and you know. <laughs> Whatever Andoni Iraola said at half time, we we as supporters of Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I know people say we don't want to be I'd like to, to get to the point where we don't have to consider what other teams are doing, but we aren't good enough to be we haven't earned that right yet. Mm. So I looked at it and I thought, thank you. I had Bournemouth fans sending me a you're welcome text and things like that, because I know a lot of people in Bournemouth. But I think the key the key is how Rob Edwards rebuilds those lads because they looked utterly devastated at the end of that game and Rob Edwards for the first time this season looked like he was finding it difficult to front up he's always fronted up from Wembley with Tom Lockyer to Bournemouth with Tom Lockyer and all points between Rob Edwards has come out spoken beautifully but Wednesday night he looked a <coughs> devastated man and he's teamed it that's one thing the other the, the key player tomorrow if he plays is Ross Barkley he can run a game who, who for us runs a game does Yatesy do it not really. Does Nico Dominguez do it? No, not really. Morgan, it might come down to Morgan doing to Ross Barkley what he did at St. James's Park to Bruno Guimaraes and what he did at the city ground against Bruno Fernandes. We need Morgan tomorrow to be our talisman and offset Ross Barkley. But, you know, <laughs> the thing is, I'm thinking it's gagey. Max thinks it'll be a goal fest. <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is, Neither of us really know, and that and that no. is the great beauty. That is the great beauty of football. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, Luton Town didn't know. They thought they were home and dry Wednesday night, and then forty-five minutes later, the beauty or the if you like the ugliness of football took it away from them. So, it's a fascinating prospect. It's a big. I mean, we, we're having FA Cup quarterfinals shoved down our throats. This game is a twelve-pointer. And it's a far bigger game than any of the FA Cup. It it should be the main game on all the channels this weekend, this game. Yeah, it should be. Uh, I completely agree there, Dave. We've always liked Bournemouth, haven't we, um, Mr. No, I, and, and, well, I'm going to jump in here. Because weirdly enough, my initial connection with Dave is Bournemouth. We both yeah, it is. <laughs> my it my is. colleague, Dave managed my ex-colleague, Ross. He's an absolutely brilliant bloke. But Great I bloke. lived in Bournemouth for eight, nine years. And I loved everything about it, apart from the fact that they were painstakingly always more successful than Forrest. And I hated it. And every time we I played them, we it. never won. And then at the end True. of that championship season, when we didn't get the penalty, you know, refs are a bit of a theme here, aren't they? It was so sickening. And then yeah, and yeah. my ex-students were on the pitch sort of like, you know, flagging me <laughs> off. <laughs> um, 
and I hated it. But so when we were three nil down, I was in the pub with my dad watching Champions League football. He was um, down in London to come visit. And I just was incensed. I thought, Bournemouth, you never do anything for us. And then lo and behold. <laughs> so maybe that's this sort of, you know, Dave and I often talk about the magic and the romance and the sort of, you know, the softer, more subjective side of football. Maybe that's the moment our seasons change. You know, we're, we've yeah. still got some, we've more than likely got points deduction to come. I don't have any information on that. I'm not, I'm not saying I do, but, you know, if precedent's anything to go by, we will. But maybe that's the moment. You know, at half time, we were third bottom, and by full time, we're given the opportunity to go six points clear. Yeah, yeah. Which could be, you know, lots of the reports have been mooted that it could be six points, or it could be between one and 10, I guess. But, um, you know, if it, and that's a game changer. And if you, if we beat Luton and we do it convincingly, the momentum is shifted in our way. You sort of, I almost hate to do it because, like I say, there's so much about Luton to respect and admire. But if we can shove them sort of faces in the dirt a little bit and say, you know, stay down there um yeah respectfully, and... then um it could be a massive game changer look there's so many cliches that we can reel out and all the back pages or or um or print those and i don't really want to parrot them off but um it's uh it truly is massive and the onus max everything you say is right mate <laughs> the onus is home advantage make the most of it yeah you know you, you i mean and the thing is uh there are there are there are some little blueprints there. They lost at home to Burnley. And crucially, the one game this season where everybody predicted them to win was when Sheffield United rocked up and Sheffield United won 3 1. So I think I think people have seen that Burnley result when Burnley won 2 1 there and, and Blades winning there 3 1, where Blades were by far the better team. You know, and Blades have had some proper thumpings this year and look yeah. out of their. Similarly with Burnley. And I think this time, I think if, if Luton had beaten Sheffield United comfortably, then I think Forrest would be written off this week. But people are beginning to think, we oh, can't totally neglect Forrest in this game. I mean, the thing is, if the, if the, if the Forrest that played Liverpool turns up, Forrest can win. But if the Forrest that went, the, the Forrest that went to Brighton, I thought, let me down far more than the team did say at Fulham. Right, which is for for everybody, Fulham was the Nadir. Fulham was the mm. lowest point, and Fulham was awful. What angered me actually, and and led me to feel really really glum about Forest was all the stuff that was talked about at the end of the Liverpool game around the referee and all this kind of stuff. I thought it would make us the angriest team in Britain. The the all the all the hot air that followed it gave the impression that Nottingham Forest were like, right, we, we close ranks, as Cluffy did in the old days, we close ranks, we build a suit of armour and we smash through whatever's in front of us, right? Mm. And we take it out on Brighton and Ovalby next week, who, by the way, have just had a right good drubbing in Europe, <coughs> and we take it there. And it was nothing of the sort, it was passive. I'll tell you something, we were all in the away end at Amex, and the subs were warming up, and everybody was looking at the subs, and nobody was looking at the 11 that was going to start the match. Because on the bench, Callum, Tywo, Anthony, yeah. really, you know, it was a bench, you kind of think, everybody's going, mind me, we must be great. Look at this, look, you know, Ibrahim Sangare, who must eventually burst out of his chrysalis. You looked at the bench and you kind of thought, man, we must be a good side if that's our bench. You know, but then the, the, the other side of that coin was people going, I can't believe he hasn't picked Callum and Anthony. You know, so I was, I, the first time for a long, long time, lads, and you'll have to forgive me for being so gloomy. It was the first time I went a long way with Forrest and felt, oh, what was the point of that? And given, given everything that was going on in the background of my life that day, I wanted some sustenance. I wanted some uplift and mm. I got none. And, and I think the Forrest fans just trooped in, sang for a bit, trooped back out. And, and we, mean. Me and Max, we talked, didn't we, about the, the rapport and the relationship between Nuno and the crowd. Now, Steve, Steve was a tactile man, a social animal, a social boy. He cultivated it. Yeah. Nuno's not like that. Nuno's more reserved, I think. But if Nuno's going to cultivate, you know, a bridge between the stands and the pitch, he's got to start delivering results. And he did. He basically sent the jury back out on him last week by what he did on what was done at the Amex. And I, I came away from that game 
I wasn't angry after Fulham. We were just beaten by the better side of the night. And, it, you know, once two or three go in, try as much as you like. I've been in that situation where the, the more you try, the worse it gets, right? But Brighton left me angry. I kind of thought, where is the mm. response yeah. to Liverpool? We've had all this Clattenburg nonsense all week and, and what have you, and Tierney and what have you. It's all well and good. You can't change it now. Go and do something at Brighton. And they did nothing of the sort. And yeah. They, I, I basically sat in the Amex and I don't think I've got I, the, the Amex has got padded seats for those who've not been there. I think it's the first time in, a, in an away end where a lot of people were sitting down. It was distinctly average. I, 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 what what I don't understand is, you know, this sort of like, we need to get behind Nuno. You know, I see it all the time as if, oh, we need a song for him. Yeah, obviously we're all behind Nuno because we're all behind Forrest and he's our manager. We yeah, need yeah. to see something on the pitch. You know, like you say, football fans and Forest fans in particular, we respond to what we see on the pitch because we've grown up in a club with a rich history of what it means to play bloody good football, exciting football. And that's why the City Ground became so famous when we were in the Championship and then uh, last season because there was something, we saw something on the pitch that reflected our passion and we had a manager that reflected our passion and represented us and our values and the best of Nottingham Forest, the best of the city. And I'm not saying Nuno doesn't, I'm, I'm not I'm not overly critical, but, you know, let's start with it on the pitch, Nuno, you know, and, and yeah, starting yeah. Chris Wood after a long layout and, you know, not playing Anthony Alanga, who's arguably been our most influential player in terms of stats, you know, you, well, you make your bed, you lie in it. We're all, I'm behind Nuno, we're all behind Nuno, but come on, yeah. let, let's make a song for him as if that's going to get us three points. Do us a favour, you know, he needs, he needs to set the team up right, he needs to pick a team that's consistent and then um, play people in the right position. I mean, that's what I want to see. That I've... Do you know what, Max? Answered. Go on. Do you know what, Max? Yeah. Um, if there was, the, I, I heard it said in the away in last week, I heard one bloke, a couple of rows behind, say quite loudly, well, if this was Cooper, he'd be getting hammered for this. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and there have been occasions since, you know, since the, that sort of like that happy Christmas that we had with Newcastle and Manchester United, where, you know, it's like, um, this is very Cooper esque. Do you think they? Do you think that the patience might run out quickly more with Nuno? For, um, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying that if lose we lose Saturday, tomorrow, it will Max. Bad, but 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 do you think if we lose tomorrow, the pressure the pressure mounts on him, and that the fans Massive. won't won't have the backing of him because he hasn't been a fan's favourite? And that also leads me on to my next point, Dave. If I watch Nuno's press conferences. And I kind of observe him when he's on the, the the sidelines at Forest, and I just wonder whether we need a bit more energy from him and and and, and a bit more passion, and and maybe that's what we were kind of lucky to have with Steve and and, and that connection. Whereas potentially with Nuno, no disrespect to him, but maybe his mood is is bringing down the football club a little bit at the minute. I saw that on Twitter, and it's a very interesting point. He's more taciturn than Steve, uh, Max. I, I I've said on several podcasts, I find. Utterly fascinating the contrast between Steve writing a, a four sided essay of program notes and Nuno gives you two sentences. Thank you for your support. We must improve. At his press conferences, I find uncomfortable. I, I, not because of Nuno, it's this, there's this barely concealed contempt, this kind of like, oh, they get, and to be fair, most of the questions that are asked in Nuno's press conferences are, be, are, are banal beyond belief. You know, asking him things that are so obvious. But why do people ask a question when they already know the answer? Apart from who's injured this week, no, no, or who isn't, the rest of the questions are, oh, you know, are you, are you, are you hoping that you can win at Luton? Like, yes. What are we even here for? So I can understand his frustration with that, but I tell you, because Nottingham Forest fans will only see the size of our ground and the size of Kenilworth Road and what we've achieved in history and what Luton Town have achieved in history. They'll see, if, he, if we lose tomorrow, he's going to have a welter burden of pressure on him, I think. But then and what? He, then what? You know, I, I agree with you, he's going to have pressure. But if that pressure leads to his job being at, at risk, and I think that says everything about what's going wrong uh, behind the scenes at Forest, you know, yeah. if 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 anybody at the club seriously thinks that sacking him, regardless of you know the fact we're still only three points above relegation, um, you know, and it, 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 yeah, regardless of that, if anybody thinks that that is seriously 
the appropriate thing to do, then, mm. you know, I worry about the future. It feels like it's a bit of a house of cards situation. And I hate to be, I hate to feel so bleak about things. And I promise I am, I promise I am uh, hopeful still and, and desperately, you know, deep in my bloody loins want us to win. But it, it feels so hard to conjure that hope when, um, when all of this stuff outside is a massive distraction. When it go back to your question, Max, when it comes to Nuno, you know, we can't, we can't um, ask him to be like Steve Cooper. He is the man he is. You know, he speaks yeah. in a certain way. He, he is his own man, his own character. And we've got to respect that. Going back to my yeah. point, I absolutely am behind him. But as Dave says, and as you've suggested, Max, patience will run thin. I just hope that that doesn't lead to some ridiculous snap decision to, you know, get Gary Megson back in for the for last 10 games. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. The thing is, I Max, Max, um, would anybody care to look at the Olympiakos model of doing things? Because I wouldn't. Well, I mean, no one wants to mention it, Dave, because it feels like a cardinal sin to suggest that, you know, there's anything, you know, there's anything wrong with the way that things are being run. You know, I, th I think for anyone that's willing to be open enough can say, yes, there has been an incredible, generous investment in the club in buying mm. players, and that's fantastic. However, it's also put us in breach of PSR rules. Um, yeah. And it's also led to a lot of unrest, you know, and a lot of people all of a sudden looking at Forrest and thinking, that's a bit embarrassing, that. Mark Clattenburg is a referee analyst. Yeah. What, the man that yeah. wrote a book slagging off his colleagues at the PGMOL? We're going to get him in? I mean... Gladiators. I, 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 I mean, gladiators, for God's sake. Yeah. Why can't we have some just, intellect and some decency? I mean, gladiators, the man... Oh, it's ridiculous. I'm watching him yeah. one week telling talk, telling some oversized bloke to it, another bloke with a cotton wool bud. And then he's in our club. You know, I mean, and the thing is, my granddad was a hell of a football man, a cracking player. My dad was a scout with Forrest under Alan Hill, the great Alan Hill, for so long, right? And they always said to me, son, when it's given, it's done. VAR might have changed that a little bit, but once it's done, it's done. But what do you not think they... Man? But do you not think with the Clattenburg appointment, and I kind of, I'm, I'm, we will move on in a minute because we've kind of gone on, on, off on a bit of a tangent. But do you, <laughs> do you not think, do you not think with the Clattenburg appointment, and 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 hear me out, Max, that maybe it is sometimes a potentially good move because if Forest need to put someone in front of the press, a bit like they did after the Liverpool decision, then they can do, and and they can put someone in front of them almost that then doesn't get the players. Morgan Gibbs White heavily criticised the referee on, on Saturday. Borderline, he'll most likely get a fine for what he said. Um, but it, if you can put Clattenburg in front of the players, in front of the management as a club representative to almost no. echo, what, uh, echo uh, what the club's it feeling. Smack, it smacks of entitlement. That's what it smacks yeah. of. That what, what, what I really didn't like, I thought that entire debacle at the end of the game, you know, Tierney was wrong. But the, the whole thing about going on the pitch, berating it, or on the side of the pitch, putting pressure on, berating a referee, whatever, whatever extent it was, I don't think that's befitting of the owner of a club so rich in history as Nottingham Forest. That's, so True. when Mark Clattenburg comes out in front of the press and, and comes dangerously close to um, justifying that sort of behaviour. Remember, we yeah. live in an era where referee abuse particularly at mm. grassroots level, is at an all-time high. Mm. It's disgraceful. And when someone comes out representing Nottingham Forest and almost comes, is, is you know, a word away from justifying that, he said, um, and, and it's not verbatim, well, the owner is very angry. He's invested a lot of money in the club and he wants to see a return on it. That That is so close to justifying, um, you know, that, that, that sort of behaviour. Paul Tierney... Mm. Paul Tierney's punishment is the shame he should feel for getting the laws wrong. Paul Tierney's punishment is that he didn't referee the game at the weekend. And, and let's hope that he improves, right? But he's made a mistake. I, that is not what I want to see from, from my, my football club, which I've followed since a boy, have spent thousands of pounds on. And, and like all of us, you know, I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm alone on that, like all of us, I don't want to see that. And so I do think it's a bad look. I don't understand the thinking behind it. And I think it's antagonistic to get someone in to, to say that we're going to scrutinise your work. Let's be real. What is, what, in the, what 
material impact is that going to have on the pitch for Forest? Having Mark Clattenburg getting paid however much, sat in the director's box, uh, chewing Maranakis, Maranakis' ear off when he doesn't like the decision. What's that actually going to do on the pitch? Nothing. What's, what's going to change what happens on the pitch is the manager and the players booking the ride days up, not Mark Clattenburg sat, sat on yeah. the throne at Forest and speaking to reporters. I'm sorry. Let's move and the on, influence, the, Hang on, let me just come back on that. The influence it has on the pitch is it makes other teams want to beat us. It's a motivational tool for other teams. Rob Edwards might say, have you seen this lot whinging about a referee? They can't take it, lads. Get stuck in at him. And I just, before we move on, Max, I go back to the 1980s and our team in the 1980s and a certain man went, we don't have trouble with referees. We try to entertain and you never know, John, you and your lot might think we're a good side. Forrest in those days were the referee's favourite team because our greatest, the greatest of all time, said a yellow card and a red card is a dereliction of duty and it's a help given to the opposition. If you get a red or yellow card, you have to face me when you come back in the changing room. And, and the Gary Crosbys and the Nigel Cloughs and the Neil Webbs and the Terry Wilsons and the Dezes and the Pierces and that barely got a yellow or a red card because the great man set the standard. And unfortunately, because I kind of come from that era, I want the same thing now. I agree with Max in every respect. OK, breathe. Let's move on uh, from Gatsby <laughs> before this becomes a... a Shows how much contest. it means, though, doesn't it? it you know, yeah, and, um, yeah, I see your points. That's, that's, I, that's, I, that's, I think, the I thing. I see your points. Yeah. I, I see your points. I will finally add, and I think that if this was a uh, you know an appointment from... If Liverpool or Man U had, had done it, I think the media narrative would have been yeah. incredibly different yeah. re it around True. Forest. But I, I can I can I can see both I can see both sides to it. Uh, right, moving on to the game tomorrow, uh, and we kind of cry out, don't we, uh, Dave, for for passion constantly from the players. But but really tomorrow it has to be kind of blood, sweat, and tears on the line, and and almost the game the game should be motivating itself for the players. They shouldn't yeah. need any extra motivation tomorrow, uh, no. and, and and I think that. The small number of fans travelling down because it is no disrespect, but but a very small uh, away allocation tomorrow. I haven't got a ticket. I'll be watching it on the TV though for sure. Um, but Dave, you'll be there, and you just hope that the players really do leave everything on the line for the fans that are there and for the fans that you know all all the Forest fan base that will be watching at home, hoping because it's the biggest. It's it, it's it's the biggest game of the season. Absolutely. I mean. You know, I'd be saying to him, if I was in that dressing room, I said, uh, thanks for nothing at Fulham. Thanks for nothing at Brighton. You know, there have been some good ones away from home. You know, there have been some good performances. I mean, against Liverpool, we played some really good football against Liverpool. If we, but I, you know, with the Liverpool game, it was like, we're 17th because we play well and find a way to get beat. Liverpool are top because they played below par and found a way to win. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I'd rather, if I'll take 10 horrible performances that gather us some points you know from these last games but if if they go there tomorrow and they play like it's kind of just another game it, it's gonna say to me like you know what where's the perspective in this club it's colossal i i saw it reported i read an article oh i read i don't know there's like a look forward to the weekend of the premier league and the person writing the article said Defeat for either tomorrow is within the context of football and league standing. It's not life, but just in that little bubble of football, it's a disaster. We come out the Kenny tomorrow and we've been beat. We're looking down the gun barrel. If Luton come out, you know, tomorrow and they've been beat, they're in real trouble. Whoever loses tomorrow is, is you know, on, on a slippy surface. And I think, and that's... Well, where I see where Max is coming from, <laughs> and I'd love a game like that, you know, as a as a football spectacle. I kind of think that, you know, maybe it'll go the other way. I mean, I wanted Brighton to mean something in the context of Liverpool, and it was treated like it was. There was no no follow on from Liverpool in that game at all. I thought it was deeply, bitterly disappointing. So you know, I mean, maybe they'll do a Forest and like. Just when you think you've got them pegged and oh, this is the trend, this is the theme, they're going to do something different, but they're going to have to play really, really well. What is possibly in Forrest's favour, and I know I got this from the, the lovely guys at Luton last night, was that they have a serious injury problem. So again, another parallel for Luton with us last season. Yeah. And I and I think a key loss for them is Adebayo because we are pathetic 
in dealing with set pieces. <laughs> Truly pathetic. In dealing, you know, I mean, Everton are in trouble. Everton are like dynamite from corners and what have you. And so if, if, if Luton were kind of thinking, well, the, the big lads in the box will stick it to the fore. But I mean, Carl Morris is going to be handful tomorrow. You know, Willie has to come in yeah. tomorrow. Willie has to be back tomorrow. I love Andy <clears> on Obama <throat> daily. He's a cracking prospect. Andy in fullness of time is going to be a, he's a lovely, elegant defender. He's got a touch of class about him. I love Andy. Yeah. But Willie has to play tomorrow for me. I couldn't agree Do, more. Carl, Carlton yeah. Morris is an, is an absolute menace. He looks, you know, he's like, he, he reminds me of Ryan Yates up if he was a striker. He's so difficult to play against, you know, and his hold up yeah. play is fantastic. Yeah. And whilst Murillo is built like a fridge and runs like a ballerina, <laughs> um, I think he, need, he needs some support. Um, and, and Willy Bolly for me is just, I don't think I've ever seen him miss a header. No. And it, it is beyond me why, as Forrest have been um, statistically the worst at set pieces, why Willy Bolly's not been straight back in the side. I think he was injured when he came back from AFCON, yeah, fair enough. But I, for me, he needs to go straight in there because um, every time I've seen him play, look, he, he's just looked absolutely solid. You know, I'd love to see him at, at the back. Do you think Max um, tomorrow's a, 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 a case of playing leaders, playing players that that, that will fight for Forest? And you know, you kind of t- mentioned it earlier about Chris Wood versus Taiwo. Given that, given that both are okay, and and, and mm. Nuno hasn't done his press conference yet. By the way, I will kind of reiterate this as we're live and recording. Uh, he hasn't done it, so things could change uh, by five o'clock this evening. But given that that, that Taiwo and Chris Wood are both fully available, you'd be surely going for Taiwo out of Chris Wood. But then saying that, Chris Wood, you know, Chris Wood has, has, has almost become a little bit of a fan's favourite. And maybe he's the player to play tomorrow. Holds the ball up again, someone that you can kind of have as a have a have as a as a target man up there. No, I'm playing Tywo every day of the week. <laughs> uh, you know, nothing but <laughs> um Ty Ty Tywo and, and andy has got God on his side, hasn't he? So um, Do you think yeah, he's been I, do you think he's been a little bit lacklustre though recently? I I think, you know, Yeah, I, I, look, I, you know, I do. And I think you know he we we saw it before. He clearly takes a bit of time, I think, to um, to get going, and to and he's a I think he's a rhythm player. And um, we've seen from both those big injuries he's had, it's taken a long time almost to sort of dust himself off, get you know, dust the cobwebs off. But I just think he's rapid, he's strong, and um, yes, sometimes he'll shin one, but he's the most. I think he's the most clinical player. He's what is. Per ninety minutes or whatever that statistic is, he's got the he scores the most goals per minute in the Premier League. I mean, Crikey Moses! If we got him in a six pointer, put him on. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with someone that thinks absolutely not. Um, you know, each to their own. But I'd be playing Chris uh, Tywo every single day of the week against Luton. You do you agree, Dave? You think that you, you think that Tywo should start tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I want my front four tomorrow to be Tyro, Anthony, Callum and Morgan. That's what I want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're going to play, if you're going to, I, I, I think Woody's a smashing lad. The thing with Woody is your service has got to be more precise. I mean, like last week, he, Woody holds up well. The, the time, I mean, he had the one chance, you know, the one real good chance that we had in the game. You know, uh, I was a bit surprised that he wasn't eased more back, eased into the side more. Um, you know, but I'm playing. Tywo, Callum, Anthony, and Morgan tomorrow. You know, uh, and there has to be a sense of like you, you play your best. Like everybody last week was kind of like feeling that you know you play. He hasn't picked his best eleven. We, yeah. we all have our different perceptions. You know, some people think we shouldn't accept decisions. Some people think we should, and all this kind of stuff. Everybody's got a view. That's great. It's about that diversity. But I want that front four there tomorrow. It, that you know to to not pick. Elanga and Callum hudson who did give Liverpool problems last week. I, I, I came out of that, that game from Liverpool. And in fact, we said last week, you asked me, Max, before Brighton, I said, play the same 11. Took, took the same 11 and said, you did really well against the league leaders who are, if they're above Manchester City, you have to maybe say, well, maybe they're the best team in the, in the world at the moment because Manchester City have won everything, right? And, uh, you know, say, you've done me a good job. Go and do it again. I have faith in you, Right. But he, he, he mocked it. I sometimes think managers have to kind of just derive, justify their own ex- yeah, you know, yeah. Saying, existence. Yeah. By, oh, look at look everybody. You know, it's like this. This everybody goes bonkers about substitutions. You know what I mean? It's like ridiculous. But because for me, I, I, I yeah, Tywo for me tomorrow. Because for me, Max, start the team that that that, that played against 
against Liverpool and and put the bodies on the line. Bar maybe Willy Bolly, I can I can I can I can completely mm. understand your point. I, and then we touch mm. on leaders, we touch on set pieces, things like that. Start the team that played against Liverpool, that put the bodies on the line, that 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 that, that, that fought, and and I didn't see any lack of passion there or desire. I saw mm. a, you know a, a few silly errors, which we talk about all the time, and a poor refereeing decision. So for me, go to Luton with that team that played against Liverpool that will fight, that will leave absolutely everything on the pitch at yeah. Kenilworth Road. Because if Forrest come away tomorrow with a loss, as Dave says, we're, we're looking at a complete meltdown. Yeah, and, and you know, I, comp- I don't think there's many Forest fans that disagree with Dave's front four. And for me, it's Yates and Dominguez behind. Two absolute, um, you know, they're just, they just love it. Sangari then, Max. Sorry? Not to bring Sangari in them back into the eleven. I'm sorry, no. I mean... <sighs> I don't want to. I mean, it, it, Sangari feels like a, the perfect sort of representation of Forest season. You know, lots of promise, um, but um, flat. And 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 I'm I'm just not convinced he cares. I, I, and 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 that's a really um, speculative thing to say. But just from the way that he's um, played and his sort of um, body language on the pitch, he doesn't seem as bothered as someone like Dominguez, who you know. Yeah, born in Argentina, raised in Nottingham, sort of vibes. He's absolutely yeah, yeah. at it, and I know he's not been at his best. But in a game like tomorrow, where it's a bit of a dogfight, him and Yatesy, I think of the people in our team, I couldn't think of anybody better, a better pairing to be there in the middle. Um, I could understand if he played Sangare, Afcon winner, played in the Champions League, highly rated, clearly very capable. Um, so I, you know, I could understand it, but for me. Who do I want representing me as a fan on the pitch? It's Ryan Yates um, and and Dominguez in in that that two behind behind Morgan Gibbs White because I think that they've they've got that aggression and that's what we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree there. Uh, men, Dave, for the, men for the trenches, men, men for the trenches. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dave, got to finally ask you before we wrap up. How <laughs> how do you see tomorrow going? Nil nil. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, nil nil. Um, just think there's so much on it, it that, that the weight of what's on it might just press down on both teams, you know. And, and I do think that, you know, they, they're not neither of them are in great shape. Um, I mean, you know, really, I just I, don't I, think, I just don't think, Dave, I could I see what you're saying about the pressure. I just don't think either t, either side is good enough to not make a, a game changing mistake. So yeah, um, that's I, true. Yeah, that's true. So I, I'd agree with and that. I and I I I just I'm going to say um, Forest two one, um, and I'm saying that because I believe uh, we've got a better side on paper. Positivity. Um, yeah, yeah, and something and and look for all of the criticism that I've got about things off the pitch, for all of the concerns I've got around that Forest deserve something to go their way. All of that aside. We've been yeah. on the receiving end of some absolutely woeful refereeing decisions that have yeah. changed games. And it'd be fascinating to stick it into an AI simulating computer to see where we'd be or where we could be in the different permutations yeah. of where we could be yeah. if it wasn't those things. And I think it's about time that something went our way, our luck turned, and we got three points scraped to, scraped to sort of scrappy goal or, you know, bing, bang, mm. bong, deflections into the bottom corner. So yeah. I, I'm, I really just feel it's about bloody time things change for us. So I'm going Forest two one, and I'm going to stick my neck on the line. I'm going to say Harry Toffolo is going to score a twenty five yard screamer because <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. he's an absolute top bloke and he's got a good left boot, yeah. hasn't he? Cracking I lad. I, in fact, yeah, him and I think him and Nico have been really, really good these yeah, they've been years. Brilliant. In the, yeah, and you know Toffolo. I mean, if you think he was the main weight in the O'Brien deal and nobody, you know, nobody paid mm. very much attention to Harry and then he dealt with his personal demons in a brilliant way and now he's yeah. helping other people. He, he, he's, karma's paying him back and I, I, I do it, I kind of believe. And actually, mate, what you say about, we have had some horrendous decisions, you know, they're, they're awful decisions. Nobody's arguing about that. What I'm saying is you just can't do anything about it once it's done, but you keep plugging away and the better you, the better you are, the luckier you get. And like you say, Matt, I would love tomorrow for like a ball to go into Luton's box with us, and somebody, you know, a Luton lad tries to clear it. It hits, I don't know, 
somebody's backside and flies in the back of the net. And we, yeah. we, we, we do, on the balance of fate and all that kind of stuff, we do deserve something to go our way, mate. So we'll see what goes on. We do, but it is Nottingham Forest. That's what I'll say. <laughs> but you never know. You never know. Positivity. Uh, I'm going to yeah. read one last comment now. Uh, Maurizio says this will be our Champions League final. Completely agree. Uh, such a huge game tomorrow. Mm. And I just hope I'm not spending the weekend planning the podcast on Monday, giving another <laughs> poor, poor referee in decision yeah. and referees dominating the conversation. I don't want to it speak was... about referees for ages. I'm so Who nervous. I wasn't nervous before this conversation. And now I've got all <laughs> up. I can... Honestly, I feel, I feel like I'm about, I'm about, to, it's about to kick off. I, honestly, I yeah. feel really nervous, but yeah, I, I also feel enthused, and I think we're going to win two one. Come on, you never, you never. Know. I, I, I am going to kick off. At, I'm, I'm kicking off at half four. I've actually got a match this afternoon. I mean, oh, yeah. two days short, two days short of my sixtieth birthday. I'm like knocking a ball about this afternoon, but love it. We'll, we'll see. We, you know, we are twice European champions. We've scaled great heights before. Yeah, Why not and also, uh, it is what it is at the end of the day, uh, to use to, to use iconic Billy Davis's phrase, and, and <laughs> we'll still support the team no matter what, given the result on Saturday. We will be live tomorrow reflecting. I will be uh, live reflecting on the game um, with a few special guests, uh, so do tune in tomorrow evening for that. Right, I think that does us nicely. I'm worn out. I'm going to have to go and lie down in the dark room again. I've said it on Monday. but I was going to go to the gym, but maybe it's time to go to Titan, though, to go back to bed. Student living, eh? Um, <laughs> uh, Dave, thank you for today. I hope you're not too Pleasure. maxed out. Two maxes. Oh, that's nice. a, that's a Gary. That's like a Lineker esque pun to finish the show. Sorry, Max. You know? Sorry no, I have to do that. I have to do that. Max, thank you. Hope Dave didn't. Cheers, mate. Dave didn't. No, I love it. Me. I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's good, isn't he? He is good. Bless him. We love you, Dave. So you, lads. Um, yeah, it's been a good conversation. Uh, thanks for all your comments. As always, we will see you tomorrow, like I say, and then Monday for our main episode. For the fans, go in tomorrow. Sing your heart out. Enjoy it. Fingers crossed for Forest. Come on, you Reds. Forest till we die. And please, just a bit of luck on our side. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 